Hello everyone and welcome to the 29th Coco Programming Tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering how we can work with core data in our Coco applications. So this tutorial and the next tutorial are going to be fairly basic introductions, but they're going to display how we can really work with core data uh, rather easily and integrate it into our applications. Now, so far we've worked with the document architecture, which basically allows you to save uh, data in your file or whatever you're working with or create new documents and you can save those to files and load that information back using uh, unar or archiving and unarchiving the information and that was all in the document uh, based you know tutorials and then we also talked about how we can use array controllers and that basically is a nice way that we can specify what kind of content the array controller is going to contain or manage and then the array controller can basically take over adding new objects to the uh, in our case so far has been the table view so anyway that's kind of what we've worked with so far but core data basically expands on what we already know and it gives you a fair amount of other options for managing data in your application so the simplest terms core data is a way that you can manage different objects in your application and it also gives you a fair amount of stuff for free and uh, most of all though it also gives you an easy way to save that information uh, to the disk so basically for core data some features that it gives you one would be that of course you can save all the data that it manages or that it uh, models and another thing that gives you would be undo support. So by undo support, I mean when you go to the edit menu and hit undo, basically Core Data manages all the changes that are made to your objects. So when a change is made, Core Data can basically add that to the undo stack or your edit undo option. And then, you know, it manages undo stuff. So that's good for you and it gives it to you for free. You don't really have to think about it. As, as long as you're making a change, that's going to be added to what you can undo. So that that's the nice thing about Core Data. Another nice thing is that it basically can manage or model multiple relationships between objects. So if you had one object that maybe, you know, was, uh, had many multiple or uh, you know, contain many other objects or uh, could have many uh, other objects related to it, then Core Data can also manage these relationships between other objects. So you're not just modeling one thing, you can also model, again, connections basically between other objects. And the last thing that I think, well, not the last thing, of course, but one of the other things that I think is nice is that it gives you binding support. And you can do so many things with uh, bindings with core data uh, that it's almost ridiculous. And uh, you can pretty much work with anything that's in your nib files and bind them to something with core data. So you'll, we'll talk about a lot of the cool things that you can do uh, that is beyond what we did in the bindings tutorial as well. So you'll see uh, more binding stuff in this as well. So anyway, that's a little brief intro to Core Data, but what we want to do here is go ahead and make a new Cocoa application, because of course we want to get started here. So go ahead and uh, you know label it whatever you want. Basically what we want here is to create a document-based application, and we also want to use Core Data to, of course, use Core Data. So once you've done that, go ahead and hit Next, and I've already created a project already, which I rarely do for these tutorials. I kind of like to go through them with you, but uh, for this, I simply made a nib file already, and you'll see that uh, right here. So basically, for you, though, you want to go ahead, of course, and create a new project using what I just showed you. Now, this is the project that I've already made here, and this is what you'll basically see when you start a new project like I just showed you using core data and document-based applications. So what you're presented with is a document uh, class, and basically this is a subclass of NS Persistent Document. An NS Persistent Document is a subclass of NS Document, which we worked with without Core Data. And as you can guess, NS Persistent Document basically gives you additional things to work with or integrate with Core Data. So that's uh, basically what you're offered with uh, NS Persistent Document, but for this tutorial you really don't really care what's uh, in this because we're not going to be talking about this anyway. But it's just nice to know that it is different than just the standard application with uh, without core data. 
Okay, so this is the important part that uh, might might take you a little while to build here, but you know, take your time, pause the video as often as you want, and I'm just going to run through basically what I have here, and I'm just going to want you to set this up. So it takes a while to set up, but uh, you know, I have faith in you. You can do it. So what we have here is basically right here we have a table view, and uh, to add the three columns, you simply select it twice to get past the scroll view and into the table view. And if you go to the Attributes Inspector, while you have the table you selected, you can change the column number to three, and that will give you three columns. And then you can change the titles like so. I changed mine to Player Name, Position, and then I have a Captain uh, column over here. And you'll notice that this is a checkbox column, and to change that checkbox, or change it to a check checkbox column instead of a text cell, you just have to type, type in check and you'll see that you get the checkbox cell option which you can simply drag into this column let go of it and it will change to a checkbox cell okay so that's all that for the table view the next thing you over here is basically just a box and literally it's called box and it's basically just an NS view that looks like a box and you can drag it out like this and of course drop it in and you get the idea and then once you have the box laid out, you have this little title at the top, which I changed to player info. And you can drag all these other elements into the box. So I dragged in a text field for the height and the weight. Then of course these things over here are labels for this. So just height, weight, pounds I also included for our weight. So you can make this kilograms if you want, if you work like that. It doesn't really matter, but just give it some kind of unit of measurement for your weight. Born is, of course, just a label as well, and uh, this would be a date picker. So you can just type that in, and you'll see that you can get date picker, and we already worked with that a little bit. And you'll also see that this we here we have is an image well, so you'll want to add an image well also to your application, and you can just do that by typing that in as well. So that's everything that we have over there. And, of course, the last two things are just simple buttons that have add and remove on them. So what you might be wondering is what this whole application is basically going to do. And the main idea of this is that, if you couldn't already guess, is that you're going to manage multiple players for, uh, let's say, just some team. So if you wanted to manage a team of multiple hockey players, you could have a bunch of players, all their names, their positions, like if they're right wing or center. Uh, you can check if they're the captain on the team or not. Um, and also you can, you know, obviously see all the information for each player on the right. So uh, this information, though, uh, is going to be dependent on what we have selected over here. So you'll see how we can do that uh, in the next tutorial, but that's just a side note for what we have. So that's what the main thing is, just basically managing some kind of team of players, and that's what the application's basically going to do. So now, whenever you get that, you know, take your time to build that up. And once you're done with that, uh, we can skip over the main menu nib because, of course, we're working on a document. We don't care too much about the main menu nib right now. And now you'll see if you hit the data model section called document.datamodel, you'll see that we are presented with this kind of, you know, little graphical interface here that we can work with. And this is what we can work with for core data. And this is kind of like a modeling little application that we can use to model objects. And by objects, I mean basically Objective-C objects that will contain different attributes. So uh, if you want to think of this as basically just the data that's going to go into our application, that's basically what it is. So it's, uh, it's very similar to like what we did with the document tutorial originally when we created a new person class or whatever we did, grades class, I can't even remember what we did anymore for different tutorials, but it's basically like creating a new Objective-C class and then putting in a bunch of attributes for that class. So that's the idea of what we're doing here. Now you'll notice there's a few terms that might look confusing. We have entities over here, and the best way to think of this is like the person or the grades class. It's just the general object that we're going to be modeling. The attributes are, of course, the little properties that go along with the class. So attributes for in our case here, we're working with like a play, a list of players, so the entity would be a player object, and the attributes would be, you know, the height and the weight of each player, and if they're a captain, etc. So that's 
some of the attributes that we'd have for a player object. And so that's basically what we have. And uh, of course, we'll work through this a little bit, and you'll see how this works. So first off, we have to add a new entity. And the entity, again, is basically just that object that we're going to be modeling. And again, we're modeling a, a hockey player or some kind of player on a sports team. So we can say in our when we click Add Entity right here, we just now can change the name of this, and we'll change it to Player. All right, so now that we have the player entity, we can add as many attributes for this player entity as we want. So we can add the attribute for its name, or uh, his or her name. And of course, the type is what kind of object we're modeling. So, you know, we have to, to specify whether it's an integer or a string or a boolean, etc. And for the name, obviously, we're going to be working with a string type. And so, now you'll notice that, uh, you know, as you change a few things over here, over in our data modeling inspector right here, you'll notice that we have a lot of things changing. So, basically, we have uh, a lot of different options that we can change on this uh, little data model inspector that, uh, you know, you can't change over here. So, um, just a few different options that I'm going to point out. Here, obviously, we can change the name. You can change if the property or the actual attribute is optional or not, so whether it's required. And usually, you know, most things are not, you don't need that data to be in there. You can add it as you go. So we're going to leave it as optional for now, but you can change it to requiring uh, to have that specific piece of data uh, when you're creating the object. Then there's also another property for transient, and transient basically it's kind of a confused property sometimes because you might think it doesn't really have much of a purpose, but transient means that basically the uh, data won't be saved. So if we were to save all these pl the list of players, the transient, if we said this was a transient property, and again, we're looking at this attribute right here, so if the name was a transient attribute, that would mean that it doesn't get saved to a file. So that means that uh, when we work in the application, Core Data will manage it, it'll manage undo support and bindings and everything for the object, but it just won't get saved into the file when we go to physically save the object. So that's just a side note for what the transient property means, it just means the object won't be saved. So um, there aren't too many times where that's you know the case, but um, you do get, of course, all the benefits of using Core Data and if you just don't want to save it, you can select transient. Index, we'll talk about later, but that's more of when you're searching for terms using core data as well. And well, that's more complicated than we need to uh, get into right now. Then, of course, there's a bunch of other things right here. Default value, you can start out saying the string is, you know, some string when it starts. So you could enter a default value there, etc. So... Anyway, uh, there's a lot of other information here, but we're not too concerned about that right now. What we really want is to keep adding some attributes. So go ahead and add another attribute, and you can call this one position. And the position is also going to be a string as well. And again, the position in a sports team would be like if you were a quarterback for a football team, or, you know, like I said before, a center right wing in a hockey team. All right, the next thing that we want is not center. I got all talking about center, but I wanted to say captain. And the captain attribute was a checkbox saying whether you were the captain of the team or not. And you can change this value to obviously a Boolean because either you're the captain or you're not. And you could argue that there's assistant captains, but uh, you know we'll keep it simple. So, you know, uh, we'll have a Boolean for captain. Another attribute that we have here, uh, getting over to the other side, would be the height and weight. So we have the height attribute, and basically the height attribute will be the type of string. And this might sound weird because, you know, we probably could uh, make this an integer type, but we're just going to leave it as a string because, uh, you know, you could say like 5 feet 11 or 1 meter or something or certain number of centimeters, it really depends, and uh, for our purpose, we don't really need to know the exact amount, but you know, you can make a bunch of text fields if you really wanted to get specific uh, with what you're dealing with, but anyway, we're just going to leave the height as a string, but we will make the weight a int, 
So or an integer. So we're going to make this. Uh, you'll notice that there's a bunch of different integer options, and basically, uh, integer 16 is just the smallest integer size. Uh, integer 64 is the largest integer size you can hold. But integer 16 basically means that it's uh, an integer that holds 16 bits, and uh, it doesn't really matter. And it's large enough for what we're dealing with and weights, because nobody really weighs you know, over a thousand pounds anyway, that's pretty ridiculous if you do, so, you know, it doesn't really matter. So integer 16 is great for dealing with weight. Now, uh, the uh, not the last one, a few other ones that we have here. Date would be, of course, when the person's born, and actually I'll just change that attribute to be called born, and I want it to be type date. And we actually have a type date, so that's useful. And then, of course, the lax, not the lax, the last attribute is the picture attribute. And that's just the picture of the athlete that we're going to hold on to. And this is uh, different from all the other ones that we've worked with. And it's going to be called transformable. And transformable is basically a core data type that works with any kind of data that's not, you know, a normal type. So kind of NS data types, uh, that's basically what a picture would be, you know, it's just a, an NS image can be stored as NS data types, and uh, basically, I'm not going to get into the real details of how this works, but basically core data, uh, you can specify how objects can be uh, encoded and stuff, uh, or encrypted using core data, but we will just keep it simple and say that transformable uh, we can use for picture types because it just is a data type, you know, nothing else here other than binary data might make sense, but transformable is really the type we want. We want some kind of object type that holds data. Okay, so anyway, that's really all we are going to use for modeling this uh, player object. And I'll just point out that if you go down to the editor style at the bottom, you can hit the little object to the right, and you'll get a new view, basically a kind of graphical view, of what this uh, looks like. So we have this player object, it shows you all the attributes, and it would also show you relationships if we had any. And it gets more complicated if you have many entities and you have more attributes, and you can combine relationships connecting different objects, and, you know, this uh, graphical style gets can be really useful if you really want to see the layout of all your objects. But anyway, ours is pretty simple, and if you need to, you know, review anything here, just just fill in the information. And in the next tutorial, I'll show you how you can bind all this information into that view that we made in the beginning, and uh, it'll be lots of fun to see how this works in the end. And you'll really see how simple uh, this all becomes for managing what would be a fairly complex application if we were to manage this all ourselves by using what we've learned so far. So, anyway, I hope you join me for the next tutorial, Lesson 30, on connecting what we've learned in this tutorial. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Please subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you next tutorial.